Okay, our next MySQL topic is indexes. So what is an index? If you imagine the database tables that you're working with having hundreds of thousands or millions of records inside of them, it can take a fair bit of processing power to be able to find things. When you apply a filter, when you're doing a join between tables. So in order to help out the database, we're going to create an index which really tells the database, this is a really important column. I want you to remember sort of where different ranges of things are inside that column. Where can you find the number 72 inside that column? Where can you find the number 1008 inside that column? So it's, it's highlighting what's really important. So it can create this sort of tree structure, which will help it be more efficient to search through that table when you run your queries. Now, don't worry about the tree structure. Don't worry about how it's working internally. What we're going to do here is just look at how to create an index and how to add that into our code. Okay, so this is the reference right here. I'm going to provide this link inside the description for you on how to create an index. There's actually a few different ways that we can do it. You can create an index when you're creating the table. That's actually sort of the preferred way to do it. But if your table already exists, you can add other indexes as long as it's not a primary key. You can use the alter table syntax to add a key or you can just run a create index command all on its own. So I'm going to work with the database that I've got created, but I'm not going to work with any of these tables. I'm going to create a brand new table. We're going to look at all three of these methods. So inside my database, I'm going to create a new table. I'm going to call it products. So I'll say create table products. And then we have our parentheses. And at the end of that, we'll say the engine's going to be NODB. Okay, so there's the basic create table command. Now inside of here, what we want to do is create the columns. Now there's nothing new about this, so I'm just going to fast forward through this. I'll skip over it and stop when I've got the columns created. Okay, so I finished typing that out. We're creating the products table and we're going to have these six columns, product ID, name, category, price, SKU, and a short description field. So product ID, this is going to be our primary key. We're saying that it's an unsigned integer. It's going to auto increment. And the last line here, we're actually defining it as the primary key. Now, this is a type of index. We're saying that this is going to be the unique value for every single row. By making it an integer and auto increment, MySQL is going to take care of it for us. It's going to automatically put in that number whenever we insert a new product. So the name and the category, these are just text fields. The price is a decimal field up to 10 digits with two after the decimal place. The skew is going to be a fixed length char with 10 characters in it. So it's a, a unique identifier for each product. Um, but it's not our primary key. I want to, we're going to add an index to this and we're going to say that each of these has to be unique, but it's not the primary key for the database. So we do a short description, var char. 500. So it's a big text field. If we want to do that, we're going to, we've put this in here so that we can add a different type of index, a full text index. Okay. So there's my basic description. Now I'm going to add the first key other than primary key in here because we can do that while we're creating it. This is the first method inside of here. I'm going to say index and then give it a name. So let's say it's uh, names or IDX names, index names. Then we add a set of parentheses, just like we did on the line above here. And inside here, we can put the one or more fields that we want to use. So I could say product name. Now, when we create the table, it's going to add an index on this one product name column. So it's going to keep track of everything inside of there. If you want, when you create an index like this, you can say you want it to do two columns or three if you want. Just like that. So it's going to combine these two fields to create one index. And you would do this if you were running lots of queries or if you were predicting that you were going to run a lot of queries where you're filtering on both the product name 
and the category at the same time. If you're going to do that in your select statements, then this is a good index to create because, okay, maybe they're going to ask about the product name. Maybe it's going to be the name and the category, but very rarely will you do just the category. If that's the circumstances, then this is a great index for you to create. Okay, so let's do this. Let's run that. Okay, so that worked just fine. Now let's take a look at the table. Here's products, and we'll take a look at the structure inside of there. So we've got our columns. Those were created just fine. Nothing new about that. Here's our primary key being defined in the section called indexes. And here's the one that we created, the additional one, IDX names. And we can see both columns are included as part of this. And unique is set to no. So we didn't need to necessarily make an insistence that both the name and the category together, those two things have to be unique on every row. It just, it wouldn't make sense to disallow somebody from ever having this two products with the same name in the same category. The SKU, however, these are supposed to be unique. So we can add an index on this one and say, yeah, you know what? This has got to be a unique index. So let's take a look at doing that one now. So we'll jump in here and we can use the second way. The first way was with a create table. Once you've done this, then we can do an alter table products. And we're going to say we're going to add index before it was just using the keyword index. So now here, add index, we're going to give it a name. So we're going to do it on the SKU. So let's call it IDX SKU. Now we don't have to put IDX in the underscore. I'm just doing that so I recognize the name. I'm going to follow this naming convention for all my indices. So index SKU, and then it's going to be on the column product SKU. There we go. Now, if you ever do need to get rid of an index that you've created, we can use this command right here. So drop index and then give it the name. So IDX SKU on and we provide the table name. So this would get rid of the index after we create it. Okay, so add index. This is going to create a normal index on just this one single SKU. So I'll run that. Fair enough. It added that index. If we go back to the structure and we take a look at this, let's, I'm just going to copy that so we can use it again. So here we have it. Now there's another index SKU right here, but we didn't define it as unique. So I want to change this. I want to make this a unique index just to say that every single row in there is going to be unique. Okay. I'm going to run just the drop command by itself to get rid of that index. Now it's gone. Now to show you the alternate one, we're going to add index, same as before, IDX skew. All we're going to change here is this word index. And we're going to change that to say unique. So now we're creating an index, which is going to tell the database it needs to track all the things going into here, but we're also putting a restriction on it to say that every single value in here is supposed to be unique. So let's run that again. There we go. So it did the same thing. It created an index. And if we go back to the structure down here, there's index name uh, or sorry, index SKU on the column product SKU and unique is set to yes. All right, two others that we can do. One is a full text. And this is the third type of syntax. So we can do it in the create table. We can do it in the alter table. Or if you want, you can just use the command create index all on its own. So we can create an index. Let's just call it IDX text on products. That's our table 
we have to specify that when we're not doing a create table or an alter table, we do have to specify which one that we're creating it on. So on products and then inside the brackets, we're going to use the column short description, just like that. Now this would create a regular one. If I change that to unique, it's going to create a unique one, but I don't want to try and uh, put a unique restriction on a description field. So I'm going to make this a full text. It's a different type of index. For full text, we should keep the word index in front of that or after that rather. So we're creating a full text index on this text field on the table products on this column. So all those things together will create this other index for us. There we go. Created that one. Go back to structure, take a look. And sure enough, there it is. Now it's the type full text. Um, you have to be very careful with the full text ones. You are dealing with large amounts of text. And if you've got a really big text field with a lot of content on there and you're creating a, an index on that, you're putting a lot of extra work on the database to do this. You have to consider whether or not you're going to be doing many searches on this. If you're going to be doing a lot of searches on this field, then it might make sense to do an index on this, but you wouldn't ever put indexes on all the fields like I'm doing here. This is really just an example to show you the different kinds of indexes that you can create. Think about what the queries are that you're going to be writing. What data is it that you're going to be searching for inside your table? What filters are you going to be applying to your table? So one last one that I want to show you. So creating an index where we want to search on part of a field. The product SKU is a great example of where we could do this. So I'm going to create an index called IDX SKU 3 on the table products. And then on the column product SKU, but we add an extra set of parentheses here, and then I can put in the number of characters that I want to use. So what I'm doing is I'm actually creating an index on just the first three characters of this char field. So I know, okay, maybe the first three characters of the product SKU indicates what category it belongs to or what type of product it is. And maybe this is the kind of lookup that I'm going to be doing all the time. So I want to create this special kind of index where the first three characters are what I'm going to be looking at all the time. This is going to be what it uses when it does the sorting and searching. So I run that and there we go. So it's that last little set of parentheses that we can put on the column name, which will define how many of the characters starting at the very beginning that we want to add this index to. All right, so that gives us the ability with create table, alter table, or just on its own to do create index. We can do drop index as well to get rid of them. And there are those four different kind of indexes. We've got primary, unique, just a regular index, and a full text index. So you've got those four kinds that you can play with to optimize. And that is really the purpose of an index. It's to optimize when you're running your queries. Don't just arbitrarily go through and add indexes like this. I mean, on a table that's only got six columns, I shouldn't really have five indexes. I mean, sure, I'm going to make a search extremely efficient regardless of what search it is that I'm doing, but I've added all this extra overhead. So every time there's more columns being added or more rows being added, every time there's new data going into that table, I'm forcing my SQL to go through and redo its indexes. It has to go through and recreate all these indexes to make sure that it can do these searches and all the extra data that's being stored in these indexes as well. It's creating this extra information off on the side to be able to do the searches faster. So you have to weigh that when you're working with indexes. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, I will leave the link to the create index page inside the reference. I'll leave another link for the entire MySQL playlist. And as always, thanks for watching.